Hello my friends and welcome to this video and today I'm on F1 2021 and you know what? I want to do a Monaco Grand Prix so let's do it. Wow Monaco looks really nice you know. Oh my god. Do you think this is what Monaco looks like in real life? Well, I would actually, I would love to see what the F1 cars look like round here in person. You know what? Hold on, give me a second, give me a second. That is right, ladies and gentlemen, I finally decided to go outside and touch some grass. But not just any grass, the grass on the streets of Monte Carlo. Hey, there isn't even grass on the streets, I don't know what I'm on about. But yeah, so me and my brother made the journey from England to Nice and eventually Monaco to attend the 2022 Monaco Grand Prix. And today I'm going to tell you what happened and what it was like to be there. Make sure you watch the very end of this video as well, as I have lots of weird and interesting stories that I want to share with you guys. Oh, and by the way, this was meant to be like a proper vlog. But um, I realised when I was there that I am in fact not a good vlogger at all. And honestly, people that can walk around in public whilst like really loudly talking into a camera they're just mental like that is just crazy and that is a skill that i do not have so welcome to the worst vlog you've ever seen there's not even a vlog so the general plan for this trip was to stay in a hostel in nice and then get the train to monaco each day i arrived at nice airport on wednesday and had to wait around two hours in a queue for my passport to be checked honestly i don't want to start a full-on rant about nice airport but please, fix yourself. There wasn't really anything to nice. do on this day in Nice, so I kind of just slept for most of the day. I then had my first night in the hostel, which was a very interesting experience, to say the least. I was in the middle of a triple bunk bed, and underneath me was this quite old guy that just kept making some really weird sounds. Honestly, the bed was like really squeaky, and every time I moved my leg by like a centimetre, the bed would make a sound, and then the old guy would just go, <laughs> What? <laughs> and yeah, that was really weird. Anyway, enough about the weird old guy. On to Monaco. On Thursday, it was finally time to head to the Principality. I got the train to Monaco, which cost me £3.28 and took just over 20 minutes. So for this day, tickets were very cheap as there's no F1 on. So I had a ticket for Grandstand L, which was only 30 euros. On this day, there was practice sessions for Formula Renault, the Porsche Super Cup thing, and then Formula 2. I actually really enjoyed this day. The view of the track was very nice. As you can see, all of the cars, especially the Porsches, absolutely send it over the curb and almost hit the wall. I also kind of saw a crash in Formula Renault, where basically towards the end of the practice session, I think, a front wing just flew past me to the left. Like, like I didn't even see the car first, just front wing, and then the car appeared, and then we watched the car get taken away. The F2 cars were very cool to see, and they do sound very nice, and also I had a nice little spot right at the top of the grandstand, where if I looked behind me, I could see them exit the chicane before, and then go past the swimming pool and into the chicane that was ahead of me. Following the final session of the day, I decided to hang around for a bit in the grandstand as there was a very nice view of the pit lane. I saw many things and people here, including Gasly, Bottas, Tsunoda, Mike Crack, Ross Braun, a Williams being taken to the FIA, an Alfa Romeo practice pit stop, and this person in the Williams building, who I could not figure out if this was Alex Albon or not. Like, it kind of looked like him, and but I don't know, I couldn't see clearly enough. And I mean, this guy was just playing golf, like in the building. Yeah, whether that's Mike, whether, no, not Mike Crack. <laughs> Sorry, I've got Mike Crack on the mind right now. Um, yeah, so whether that's Alex or Alvin or not, I don't know. Then on the way to the toilet, Carlos Sainz just casually cycled past the track. And then Sebastian Vettel did as well. I didn't get a good video of him, but trust me, that is Sebastian Vettel. I waited by the track for a bit longer, and then I managed to get a picture with Yuki Tsunoda, who was doing his track walk. And yes, that is me there. There goes the Webby 87 face reveal. Comment down below if you think I'm less or more clapped than you expected. I'll be interested to hear what you have to say. Following this, I decided to walk on part of the track by the casino when it opened up. Just uh, on the track now, we've got, um, I have no idea what this part of the track is, Mirabeau. And, uh, oh, there's Nico Rosberg down there. 
how on earth did he get there? Just the, I'm walking down to the head bin. None of these fools around me are taking the racing line. They're what? <laughs> what is this? Look at this beautiful racing line. We've got the apex here. Click that into the hairpin, get nice and close to the corner. This dog is also not taking the racing line. Absolute buffoon. Here we are then, approaching the hairpin. Uh, brake down to gear one. Look at this line I'm taking. Wow, it's, it's very flat actually. I don't know, it doesn't feel like that in the game. Um, I need to stop going on about the game in, when I'm here in real life. Clearly, I have no life. And I then bumped into Damon Hill, Natalie Pinkham, and Simon Lazenby, which I thought was very cool. They were literally just walking down the street, and for some reason, no one else was like going up to them to get pictures or anything. I mean, maybe it's just because this was near the casino, so everyone was there, just like weren't even F1 fans, and they were just the scumbags that were just there for the night out, not even for the F1. I don't know, maybe not, who knows. I ended the day by having a pretty solid pizza next to the track and then going into the Monte Carlo Casino. I did not gamble myself because I think it's a bit stupid, but I enjoyed watching rich people lose lots of money at the roulette table after just being like blatantly rude to the poor waiters that were working there. Overall, I thought Thursday was a very enjoyable day and with the ticket being so cheap as well, I would rate it 8.5 out of 10. On Friday morning, there was an absolutely massive queue for the Monaco trains outside the station in Nice. But luckily, I came up with a very sneaky way to avoid the queue, which I will tell you about at the end of the video when I go through my sort of advice for going to a Monaco Grand Prix. Once I got to Monaco, it was time to this time head to Grandstand O, which is where I had the best view out of any other day. I could see both chicanes by the swimming pool and a bit of the pit lane as well with some very nice views of Monaco behind. I just about caught the end of the F2 qualifying where I saw Jake Hughes hit the barrier just in front of me, um, which was a bit crazy. And by the way, for some reason, the commentator kept on mentioning how Jake Hughes is from Birmingham, like as if it's some kind of insult. Yeah, I don't know, that was kind of weird. Anyway, he was luckily okay. And then after that, I saw the F1 first practice session. Uh, it was very cool to see how the F1 cars absolutely send it over the chicane here until Ricardo's McLaren sent it a bit too much and also hit the wall just in front of me, similar to the crash from Jake Hughes from Birmingham. What was also cool about this grandstand was that to get to it, you had to like walk past the track where you could get very close to the cars, although you couldn't stay there for too long or someone working at the circuit would shout at you and get you to move. FP2 was also very cool as everyone did much faster laps and luckily no one crashed this time, um, I don't think, not, not by me anyway. But also, even when at the track, the Monaco TV directors, oh my god, they're the absolute worst. There were so many yellow flags, and like they wouldn't even show it. They would just show like Nicholas Latifi just doing a lap. It was so annoying. Other than that though, another amazing day. I will give it a solid 9 out of 10, as this was actually the only day I saw the F1 cars from one of the grandstands. On Saturday, it was finally time to see some proper F1 action. Although this time it was from general admission, which was up on the hill overlooking the final few corners. The train journey there on Saturday was not fun at all. It was just really hot and we were all packed in like sardines. But I made it to Monaco nevertheless. And after some intense parkour and climbing, I managed to get a pretty good spot at La Roche, where I had a view of this chicane, the final corner, and just about a TV screen. Unfortunately though, it was actually a very dangerous spot as it was really steep and slippery and there was a bit of a drop a few minutes, a few meters below as well. As a result of this, the Monaco police turned up about an hour before qualifying and actually got us to move to a different place. Luckily, I managed to get another decent spot for qualifying where Leclerc made the crowd go wild by securing pole in his home race despite an interesting end to the session. Overall, I would rate this day 6.5 out of 10. I don't want to sound like I'm complaining about anything as I still really enjoyed it and I'm very grateful for going. But there were just a few things like the train journey and getting moved by the police, which just meant it wasn't quite as good as the first two days. I was once again in general admission for the race on Sunday, but this time I decided to get up pretty early to try and get a good spot for the race. Although not as early as some people that get there at like 6am and they chain their chairs to a tree. And yes, that did actually happen by the way. I got to the track at like 10 or 11 in the morning and got a very solid spot for the day, as you can hopefully see. I really enjoyed the F2 race and seeing Drogovic win 
and then the Porsche Super Cup race, which was a nice addition to break up the big gap between the F2 race ending and the F1 race starting. And after many hours of standing around waiting for the race to start, it was like five minutes away from starting. I was so excited. And then I started to feel a few drops of rain on me, but I was still excited and there was actually a cheer going around in the general admission zone as we knew we were potentially in for a wet race. But then it really started to rain and I also forgot to bring my coat. And then they delayed the start of the race. And uh, the drivers are out of their cars. I want someone come to Monaco, the they said. The It'll be fun, they said. Okay, also, I want to hear what you guys think about the delayed start because I thought it was very silly. Like, I understand that when the race stopped, like when the rain was really bad, that makes sense. But delaying the start because of changing conditions, really? It could be just me, but I thought it was a bit unnecessary and I was very looking forward to a dramatic start as the rain was starting to fall. But never mind. Eventually, though, the race did start and shortly after, Latifi was in a wall. Wow. You just knew that was gonna happen. It was a pretty solid race for Monaco, I think. I think it was a bit annoying to also not have a standing start after Schumacher's crash, but there was quite a lot going on, to be fair. There wasn't too much for me to actually capture until it was the final lap of the race and Sergio Perez managed to hold on until the end. What a legend. Following the race, I was just sat somewhere on a random street in Monaco and then Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang just walked past. And to be fair, it was only my brother who noticed him, but I managed to get a quick photo of him and I'm grateful to say this is actually the second time in my life I've gotten a selfie with Aubameyang. And in the time between these two photos were taken, I have done my GCSEs, A-levels, left school, got a job, quit that job and started this YouTube channel. Aubameyang has scored loads of goals, won the Golden Boot, won an FA Cup and left to go to Barcelona. And Tottenham Hotspur have won zero trophies. <laughs> Seeing Aubameyang was a lovely way to end the day and I would rate the day overall 8 out of 10 uh, due to a great race, in fact multiple great races. However, I did get very wet, although that was completely my fault for not being prepared. On Monday night, I got my flight home from Nice, and I kid you not, I was on the same flight as Ben Daly. I was walking through the plane to my seat, and he was just sat there, like, to my left. I couldn't talk to him or say anything, as everyone behind me was waiting to, like, get on, so I would've just got in everyone's way. But yeah, that was so weird, he was literally just on the same plane. And then I did see him again, actually, at, when I was at Stansted Airport, as we were leaving. However, it was midnight at this point, and he looked very tired and clearly had somewhere to be so I didn't want to bother him. But following that weird experience, I was eventually back home and I feel like now that it's been a few days, I can reflect on my time at the Monaco Grand Prix. But first though, here are my tips for anyone thinking of going next year or in the future. Firstly, if you buy food and drink before I actually get into Monaco, you can save so much money. Secondly, get there early if you're in general permission and make sure you're prepared with stuff to do whilst you wait. Thirdly, be prepared for how expensive the days from Monaco is. 10p per megabyte. What is that? Finally, and I don't know if this is a bit of a scumbag technique, but basically to avoid the queues at the train station at Nice, if you just buy a train ticket to another random destination, like in France for like a few pounds, then show it to someone that works there. They just uh, let you into the station where you can sneakily avoid all the queues and then just hop on the Monaco train. Um, apparently, allegedly, I don't know, I, um, I heard that from a friend. Yeah, I didn't do that. But yeah, that is pretty much all I have to say. It was a very cool experience that I'm very grateful for. And I don't think it was as expensive overall as you would expect, as I managed to save a lot of money by staying outside of Monaco and being in general admission on the two most expensive days. But I am aware that going to a Grand Prix is still something that is inaccessible for a lot of people due to the prices, which just sucks to be honest. Especially when so many of the people there clearly didn't even care about F1 and were just there for the glamour of Monaco. But yeah, I've been talking for way too long now, so I am going to shut up. Feel free to ask me any questions in the comments. I will happily respond to all of them. But other than that, thank you for watching. Goodbye.